Hey guys, Brian Holder here, Brian Holder Graphic and Web Design, coming at you with a WYSIWYG Web Builder tutorial. And today's tutorial, we're going to talk about bookmark events and some of the cool things you can do with those. Uh, so on my Facebook page a few weeks ago, I kind of teased out there that I was going to be doing a tutorial on bookmark events. And it took me a little bit longer to get this out than I wanted to, but it took a little bit for me to figure this out as well. So basically, uh, what we're looking at here is my upcoming web design. Uh, it's not live yet, so you can't see it yet. Uh, however, I will be publishing this soon, and I will let you know as soon as it is published. Um, but, basically, what we have is my header up here at the top, and I have all my links. I have a little top bar up here. Um, not sure what I'm going to put up there, but right now it just says contact me. Uh, in fact, my last uh, tutorial we talked about this contact me and how I have a, a light box show up with my contact page in it. Uh, the contact page is a PHP page, so that's why we're not seeing anything uh, when I click on it. Plus, I didn't preview the whole site, just the, this page. Um, but as you'll notice, when we scroll down the page, my he as my header disappears, I have a subheader pop up, kind of a condensed version here with my links in it, and then my logo over here to the left. And we go all the way down the bottom, and we go back to the top, it disappears. Okay? And we're going to talk about how I built that today doing using uh, bookmark events. So I'm going to go over to WYSIWYG Web Builder. And what I have here right now is a, a blank page. And I'm going to adjust this guide here because I'm not sure if this is in the right spot. I want this set at 970. I'm going to lock that guide in there. And I do that because it's easier for me to uh, visually lay, set the layers and make sure things are the right width when I can see that edge. Uh, so I love these grid lines that uh, WYSIWYG Web Builder 10 brought and they put in there. Um, but they never put the edge in for some reason, the last one. So, the width is 970. You can use whatever width you're using. That's fine. This will work on anything. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay out the lay out a layer at the top. Okay? And this is going to be like our fixed layer, right? This is going to be the layer that is at the top of the page. And we're going to drag this out to be the whole width of the page. And we're going to change it. I'm going to select relative horizontal position sizing. That way it spans the entire length of the page. And we're going to give it a, just a kind of a color here so we can see it on the video better. Tomato. There we go. That's very tomato-y. Wow. And the last thing we got to do, go to Page Properties. And I like these to be centered. And Preview. And there it is. Just a big fat layer goes all the way across. So the next thing I'm going to do is drop in a text box. And I'm just going to throw a bunch of lorem ipsum text in there. So we have some content on the page that scrolls, because the page needs to be long enough for the scroll bars to show up. So, warm ipsum, paragraphs, 10 paragraphs ought to give us plenty. It's quite long, so that'll work. In fact, I'm going to uh, give it a little bit of line space in here, just to make it a little bit longer. Maybe make the text a little bit bigger. Give it a little color, all uh, gray. Ba-boom. All right, perfect. <coughs> so now we'll preview this just to make sure it's scrollable, and it is. You see that we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. That gives us the opportunity for the header to disappear, so we can test to make sure the new header reappears when we want. Okay. So now the next thing we're going to want to do is add in our subheader. Okay. And this can go anywhere. Uh, it doesn't have to be at the top. It doesn't have to be at the bottom because we're going to control its position uh, within the properties of the header. So I'm going to put it... I'm going to stick it right underneath the header just for uh, the sake of having it someplace easy to work on. Okay, we're going to drag this out to be 970 pixels. Why? Because that's as wide as my page. If you're using a different page width, then that's what you want. And I'm going to do 90 pixels tall. Okay, now we're going to set this to be a sticky layer. You're going to leave this at top left. You want the relative horizontal sizing, so that way it spans the length of the page. Okay, you can offset. Uh, the X and Y axis if you want. Uh, that'll push it off the top or push it off the side. Um, you would want it to be pushed off the top if you're doing multiple layers that span across and you wanted them all to float in the same spot. Um, I don't think it's necessary. We're only doing one layer here. The idea of this is to have, of course, a small layer um, that's very condensed and doesn't take up a lot of room for the user, but also provides your links and stuff at the top. So we're just going to leave those at zero. Um, delay. Let me show you what delay is. Right now it's set to 500, 
and I just changed the alignment to center as well. But the delay is set to 500. Let me show you what that does. What that does is that allows that layer to kind of uh, hang behind. And I'm, let me, real quick, let me change the color too so we can see it. And we're going to change that to a blue color. Just so you can see it. Okay, now you see how it kind of floated up to the top? Bring this down, see how it kind of floats in after? That's what the delay does. It allows it to kind of catch up. So it's kind of a cool eye trick. If you, if you want to do that, you can. Um, it may get in the way of the users, especially when they're scrolling from the bottom to the top because of the layer will be in the middle of the page there a little bit. Um, so I always set mine to zero. I don't think it's necessary, really. Okay. And that's it. Now we can add anything we want into that layer. So just for grins here, we'll add in a little shape. And we'll just call it our logo for now. Um, star shape. And we'll make it white. No border. Okay. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. 60 by 60 maybe. I'll drop it right in this layer. Okay. So now you'll see that that's in the layer and it follows that layer all the way around. You see how it stays at the top? That's what we want. But now we have to add in the functions to make it disappear and reappear. Okay. And we're going to do that using a bookmark. Alright. So I'm going to drag this down just a little bit so I can position that bookmark where I want it. And it's very important that the bookmark goes on the page. Don't accidentally drop this bookmark inside of a layer. Make sure it stays on the page by itself somewhere. Okay? So when we go into the bookmark, we want to rename this bookmark to something special. So this is going to be um, hidden header or something unique for the bookmark name. Okay? Now the events. We can add a series of events. There are three different events that we can add to this. And they are on scroll hide, on scroll reveal, and on scroll reveal partial. The two we're going to use to make our header appear and reappear are on scroll hide and on scroll reveal. Okay. So the first one we want is on scroll hide. And what that means is that when that bookmark is hidden because of somebody scrolling, do this, right? So what we're saying is when somebody scrolls and hides the bookmark, we want to show with an effect, our layer. Index layer 2, which you, you can name this whatever you want, or it could be a default layer, just make sure you know what the name is, okay? And index layer 2 is the second layer we added, so I know that that's the header layer that we want to appear. And then you can do any kind of uh, effect here. You can have it fade in, you can have it slide. The ones that I have on my website are slide up, that way it slides from the top. And length, again, just like with that delay we talked about earlier, you can have that set to any number. 500 is usually about a, maybe a half a second or so. Um, 1,000, you can put in 3,000 if you want it to be really slow. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is add the function that's going to make that layer disappear when somebody gets to the top. And we're going to go the exact opposite. So on scroll reveal, so that means when that bookmark is being shown or when you can see that bookmark, you want to hide with an effect. Uh, hide with effect, uh, same layer, layer two, and you can choose a different type of uh, a different type of effect, or you can do go the same. I have, like I said, I have slide up, and 500 is probably fine. In fact, I could, I would say maybe 500 is fine for this one, and as it as it appears, um, somebody's scrolling, so not necessarily waiting for that to show up. So you can even go a little bit longer. So I'm going to change it to 750. Yep, did I do the wrong one? I did. Hold on one second. So show with effect, I want to be 750. Okay, so we're almost done. Don't hit preview just yet. Next thing you want to do is load up the object manager. Uh, if you can't find that, if you go to view, your view t uh, tab, and depending on what, I use this layout. I don't use the ribbon. I don't care for the ribbon too much. Um, but if you have the ribbon, it should be about the same. Go to view. And you're going to find a button somewhere that says Object Manager. You're going to pull that up. And here you have all the different objects that are on that page. And what we want to do is take Index Layer 1 and where it says Visible, we're going to uncheck that. So now that object is invisible when the page loads. And you'll see that it kind of hashes out and grays out. And you can't edit it. You can't move it. It's almost like it doesn't even exist. Okay. And when you want to edit that or you want to change anything, you have to go back to the Object Manager, make it visible, make your changes, and then rehide it. Okay, now we can preview this and it should work. So we load the page 
and here we have our normal header. Here's our text, and as we start to scroll down the page and that bookmark becomes hidden, in comes our new header. And when we scroll back up and that bookmark comes back into view, away goes the, header, the other header. Okay? And now you have to know how to do uh, some pretty fancy stuff with WYSIWYG Web Builder, uh, making some cool headers. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. Give it a thumbs up. I would certainly appreciate that. Again, I am going to be uh, working hard to get some more tutorials out to you, working hard to get my website done. The website is going to be awesome. It's going to show you so many things that you can do with WYSIWYG. It's going to be built entirely in WYSIWYG. And uh, if you like me, if you really, really like me, uh, I encourage you to go over to facebook.com slash, uh, what is my name, BJ Holder, I think, BJ Holder Web, and like my page there. Yep, there we have. There's my can right there. Alrighty, I appreciate it, guys, and I will catch you on the next tutorial. Appreciate it. Thanks.